Hey, what's up guys? Uh, <clears throat> today I wanted to do a tutorial on how you can take an image off of Google, really from anywhere, and instead of using your expensive art programs like um, you know Adobe, things like that, or trying to learn how to use Inkscape or other art programs to create inverted versions of that photo, um, I want to show you real quick how I do it in the easel. So uh, example is this flag that I designed and did uh, about a month or so ago. You can see that the shepherd's face is exactly the way I wanted it. And I did the inverted version that I'm going to show you right now. So this particular example of a flag, I literally painted this entire flag black and then I told my CNC to go to work and when it was done all I had to do was add the blue line and it was done. So let's get started. So uh, I'm gonna go with an image off Google here of a bass. So you can see there's some like watermarks in here so first thing I want to do is I'm going to right click it. I'm just going to save the image. All right, image is saved. I'm going to go back to easel, and I'm going to click my little import button here. I'm going to tell it I want to trace the image. So you're going to click upload file when you get to this screen. Don't change anything here. And then we're going to drag up the largemouth bass and hit upload. And very rarely does it grab a watermark. So I can see it right here. If I grab threshold and drag it over, let it load, you can see that that watermark started to go away. Now it's gone. Okay, I'm happy with this. You can see that it grabbed the bottom of the photo here. But you'll see when this is vectorized what will happen. But You can see there's a button here that says invert. If you click this, it's not really going to be what you want. So you're going to see what will happen here. So everything that's black is going to go to white. And anything that's white is going to go to black. But it's going to make a giant square. And you don't want this because what you end up having is a big square that your CNC is going to want to carve and that's not quite what people are looking for so we're going to stay with the normal image and we're going to tell it to import and I'm just going to make it a little larger here for the purpose of this video alright while it's highlighted um, I'm going to hold shift no actually let me just click out and I'm just going to drag over this bottom portion of the image. And I'm going to delete that out. And I'm going to highlight this whole bass. We'll click Edit and center it to the material. And you can see my rendered version over here looks kind of weird. Right? And that's because I'm, right now I'm going to cut it on a 1 8th end mill. So because there's detail in this, I like to use a 60 degree V-bit. And you can see that the bass shows up right but that's a deep that is a deep carve there okay so let's zoom out <clears throat> not worried about the depth of cut right now what I am going to do is I'm going to highlight this entire bass we're going to go up to the app section looks like a little Lego click that and scroll down till you see the offsetter All right, now I'm going to bring it down to 0.15 inches. And you can see what happens is it creates an outline around the bass that is offset outward at 0.15 inches. I want my iterations to be at 2. And what that means is I'll now get two lines around the bass. All right. I don't want the original to be kept, so I'm going to uncheck that box. It's going to keep a couple things inside there. And we're going to go ahead and import it. And I want to zoom out while that's highlighted. I'm going to just drag it out of the way. 
And what I want to do is I'm going to hold shift. And I'm going to click this two times so that those two iterations that I chose are no longer selected, but everything in between is, and I'm just going to hit delete. All right. Now what I have is two outlines around the bass. The reason the line's so thick is because it's being told to cut pretty deep. So I'm just going to bring this down here to like 0.04 so I can see them. And they're both selected, so I'm going to hit Edit, Center to the Material. And if you remember, I told the bass to center already. <clears throat> now I'm going to zoom in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this outer portion. And I'm going to go to Cut. I'm going to change it to clear out pocket. Now you can see the whole thing gets highlighted, but I'm going to put it at zero inches. So it's an outline that is not being cut at all. And while that's selected, I'm going to right click it, tell it to send it to the back. All right, so now that artwork is in the back. Now I'm going to grab the bass. If you notice, not all the bass got selected, so I'm going to have to drag over. And I'm going to hold shift and select those two outer layers. So now the whole bass is selected. And I'm going to tell that to be at zero inches as well. Now you can see it went away. Now I got to try to remember where this outer layer was, which it should be this dark line here. I'm just going to click that box. I'm also going to do clear out pocket on that. And we'll put that at a depth of like 0.08 inches. Now you're probably looking at this like, what is going on? Like this just looks weird. I run a detail view, it just looks like I'm doing a pocket cut of like the shape of a state or something. Uh, I don't even know. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this pocket cut and I'm going to right click it, tell it to go to the back. Again, it looks weird, right? Now I'm going to select the original, which was the outer iteration. And I'm going to right-click that, send that to the back. Now, you can see that the bass showed up, because if you think about layers, I have the outer layer, which is set at a pocket cut, or a clear out of pocket at zero inches. That's in the, all the way in the back. The second layer is actually in the front and the bass image is in between follow me now if we do a detail view of this the bass is actually backwards from what we had originally so if you wanted to paint this board let's say green or you can go black, whatever color you want to go. When this carves out, everything that's dark over here is going to be the natural wood color, and anything that's white is going to stay the color of your board. For instance, this sample silhouette of the largemouth bass, you can see where the black is, all of this raised stuff here, right here, would all be the color you paint the board. So it's a quick way to uh, save some time. If you know your, your work piece is going to be all the same color, uh, this is the way I would do it. This is the way that I do my union designs. 
a lot of people reach out to me through my Etsy and they'll say, can you make me a union with you know, a fish on it or a deer or an elk or something like that. This is how I would do it. Um, I feel that it comes out a lot cleaner and it's, it's easier to paint too. You know, trying to paint into these little crevices, you know, if, if we were doing this image the, uh, the original way, where all this raised stuff was carved down, you'd be hand painting in all those holes or, or using uh, or a mask or something like that to paint in there and it just creates more time. So I like to do it this way. I like to leave the parts that I want to paint to be raised. It's easier. I can use a foam brush, whatever the scenario is for painting, but this is the easiest for me and I feel it comes out the cleanest too. All right. so. Thanks for watching today's video about uh, taking images and inverting them. If you didn't see the other video I posted this week, um, I showed how I convert an image from my iPhone uh, to an SVG fairly quickly using an app. So take a look at that. I'll tag that in the video as well. As always, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It really helps out. Have a great day.